Hello, I am with Simi Bookall, um, and we are going to be talking about some communications and digital advocacy that you can do on Advocacy Day and leading up to Advocacy Day. So I'm going to have uh, Simi um, sort of go through this first document, and then we will sort of show you some other resources. But I also wanted to highlight that all of these resources are available right now on the Advocacy Day webpage under social media resources. So you don't have to write anything down. And your state captains will also connect with you about these resources. So if you do have additional questions, you can reach out to myself and Simi, or you can reach out to your state captain and they will be able to provide you with more information. So I will turn it over to Simi for this first page. Hi, everyone. Um, so we're super excited about our upcoming Advocacy Day. And a huge part of getting the word out there is having you all share about the event because we could share till we're blue in the face, but where people really listen is when our advocates are talking about it and sharing their first and experience. So just want to walk through this flyer and make sure we're touching on all the key things that you should be keeping in mind as you are advocating and preparing for Advocacy Day. So when you are posting about Advocacy Day, you want to make sure you are tagging Resolve and the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. So we have all of our tags for the all of the most of the social media platforms included on this document. Um, and um, it's also just super important to make sure you're also tagging ASRM because um, they're our partner in this and we want to make sure that everyone is um, being recognized in the correct way. So just make sure you're including their tag as well. Um, you also want to put, make sure you're using our event hashtag, which is Let's Talk Pro Family. Um, I believe there's more information about us using the term pro family in our frequently asked questions section on the Advocacy Day website, or you can always um, reach out to your state captain or Tracy to get more information about our the term pro family and why we're using that. Um, so I definitely encourage you to use that hashtag. And of course, our if advocacy and our access to care hashtags. We also have a IVF for vets and adoption tax credit hashtag. So you'll wanna use those hashtags where applicable if you're talking about that specific legislation in a post, then use the, use the hashtag that makes the most sense for, for that post. Um, another great resource that Tracy created was our um, the Twitter handle Excel document. So when you are on Twitter and you're tweeting about our issues, you'll want to tag your uh, representative in the tweet um, and just make sure you're confirming, you know, that that is your your rep. Um, and it's a lot of the elected officials are most active on Twitter. So we find that it makes the most sense to tag them um, on Twitter, as opposed to like Instagram. Um, we know that majority of legislators have a, a Twitter account. Um, so always, you know, using that to make sure that we're getting their attention. Um, what's really cool is oftentimes uh, legislators are actually tweeting themselves, it seems. Um, and but depending on how busy they are, they might have staffers or some staff tweeting, but at some point they're always gonna be aware of what's going on um, through their Twitter feed and hopefully they follow their own <laughs> Twitter feed. Um, also, if you blog, um, we, want, we wanna know about it. We want to know, um, like where, if a specific blog is talking about advocacy day, we'd love to 
have you share about the experience, um, your advocacy day experience, pre post advocacy day, send us the link so we know that you posted or you wrote about it. Uh, we always love to share testimonials about experiences that people have at advocacy day to help with future recruitment efforts. So definitely encourage that. And also um, before you wanna be cognizant of oversharing um, and being careful to not take a picture or a screenshot without having the permission of other advocates who are participating on advocacy day, especially legislate, um, legislators or their staffers. Um, you might not be authorized to take pictures of them for whatever reason. So you wanna make sure you get permission first and don't just share um, photos of other advocates as well. Um, also, we have a ton of um, posts that we're sharing on Resolve Speed. Um, AS ASRM will be sharing. Um, we also tweet. So wherever you can be proactive and retweeting or reposting our posts is a great way to share about the event if you don't feel comfortable like creating your own posts or sharing your own photos. This is a great, great way to be active as well. And of course, um, uh, sharing that also goes into word of mouth. Um, you know, that's the, the best way that we have reached to our, to the community. We very much rely on organic um, reach for our, our social, uh, social media channels. They're, as you know, we're a nonprofit. We have a limited budget when it comes to advertising. So. Um, that organic word of mouth is very valuable. So wherever you can um, use your voice or share on your personal platform or um, reach out to other organizations to ask them to talk about the event or see if they'd be interested in being community partners with Resolve um, so we can work together to get the word out about these important issues. Um, wherever you can do that and um, spread the word, we definitely encourage that as well. Uh, scrolling down on this document, we have a few sample posts. We also um, wanna make sure that when you are posting, try to be positive, even if you had maybe not a negative experience or maybe your rep reported back that they um, won't be supporting the bill for whatever reason or the issue, you don't want to bash them online. You want to just make sure you're always keeping the relationship with the legislator positive. Um, and so that's definitely a key thing to keep in mind. <laughs> um, and also, again, if you're sharing, if you're posting in a blog or you have pictures to share and you've gotten permission to use those pictures or you have videos that you want to share with us, definitely in, email us at info at resolve.org and just letting us know in the email that you give us permission or that you have gotten permission and CC those people like the advocates to let us know um, that it's okay to share that. Um, um, many times we'll also reach out to you to confirm that we have your permission or the permission of the other advocates. So um, that's another way to submit to us. So here's just some sample posts. I uh, won't read through all of them. I think, they, again, they'll be available to you online and through your state captains. Um, you can definitely deviate away from these posts, but just keep the general message um, there um, to what we have included in the sample post. And also you wanna consider after your meeting, thanking, going on Twitter and thanking your uh, senators and directly uh, tagging them. Um, I'm not sure, Tracy, you can confirm if you guys are still setting, like sending um, hard copy letters to say thank you, but a tweet in addition goes a, a long way as well. Yes, um, we're definitely going to encourage people to send email thank yous uh, after their meetings. Um, but also, yes, um, thank you messages via social media is super important. And, you know, Simi has outlined some great posts that if you don't know 
what to say. It's easy to copy and paste and put it right into your you know, Twitter account and then tag the elected official. Or as Simi said, if you want to personalize it, you can. But these are super helpful to quickly, you know, I could just copy and paste this one, find the Twitter handle and add it in, and then I'm set. Um, and as Simi said, you know, so many elected officials have Twitter and they monitor their Twitter, will repost, comment. So this is a great way to get involved. Um, and so I wanted to share this other document that is similar, um, oops, but I also wanted um, Simi to talk a little bit about some of these great images and frames that we have available. Yeah, so this is just the so social media guide we created and it's a lot of the same information that you saw on the last post, but how this is different is that we specifically link to some sample Facebook, Instagram images, and like Instagram story images um, you can use. Um, we, so if you wanna click on one of those, they, you will get um, a, what we call box. It just stores all the graphics that we have and you can download them and you can print them and you can write a personalized message in these selfie signs, which Tracy is pulling up. Um, some of them have pre-written messages in them. So you can just print and use that, or you can, I believe these are, mm -hmm. yeah, they're PNG files. So they're photo files. So you could also like save as and like share them as an image if you don't have printing capabilities. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, there's some ways you can play around with these and use them, but these specifically are, are the selfie signs, which are fun to use and definitely recommend printing out and writing your own personal message and maybe taking a, a nice shot outside or in your Resolve Orange or right after you finish your meetings, um, like put a little message in there. Uh, if you can add the mess, the video or the, the photo of you with the selfie sign um, and tag like share it on Twitter and tag your rep just to have that additional element of, you know, giving a face to the issues and giving a face to the person that they just met with. So definitely recommend using the selfie signs, a really fun element to get the awareness about the event and our issues. Yes, definitely. I know last year it was really nice to see we had so many advocates that printed these out and then tagged resolve and had the hashtag so it was fun for for me to sort of see all the images and things that um, people wrote and so if you are able to and interested we'd love for you um, to be involved in the selfie signs for the day and so now I'm actually going to stop screen sharing and I'm going to ask Simi just a few uh, frequently asked questions to end our recording. And so coming from a, say someone who is a new advocate who is brand new to sort of social media advocacy, what would you say are like some top tips or best practices for someone who is feeling nervous? Nervous about sharing on social media? Yeah, like say they're 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 new, they mm -hmm. they haven't really done these sort of, you know, yeah. Twitter messages before and are are sort of feeling got it. unsure where to get started. Okay, cool. Um yeah, so there's, I, I feel like there's might be two categories of someone who's anxious about sharing. There's someone who might not be completely open with other people in their lives about their struggles with building their families or infertility. And then there's people who just aren't really savvy with social media. So for people who just aren't really open about, you know, their journey in general, um, I think that 
one of the best ways is Instagram is one of the better pl platforms to use. Um, if you follow an organization like commenting, hey, I'm an advocate um, for, for like advocacy, Resolve's advocacy day, your organization would align perfectly with this, with Resolve and the issues. Um, go to like resolve, um, www .resolve slash advocacy day to learn more about the event. Like just something um, that's a little bit more passive that doesn't, you know, involve you posting on your personal page um, to get the word out there, like commenting or even just direct messaging an organization mm -hmm. about the event or just an influencer that you know that talks a lot about um, infertility and you really respect them, just, you know, direct messaging them and saying, hey, you know, I've been following you for years and I respect, I love your message and your narrative and your platform. And I really think you would be a great addition to this event. So those are some ways that you can spread the word without sharing on your personal platform. As far as being just nervous about sharing on social media in general, because you're not really confident with that, I think, you know, the handout that Stacey, um, Stacey, Tracy, excuse me, shared um, has a lot of, you know, sample tweets and, and resources, and you can always, you know, ask your state captain um, any, you know, questions, and I'm sure they'd be help, happy to help you navigate that as well. Yes, yes, definitely. And then another question, um, why should people um, engage in social media advocacy or what, what's the impact that you see? Uh, I think I, I, I spoke on it a little earlier how, you know, we definitely as an organization understand the need to get the word out there and we do it as much as we can. Although because we are, we have so many people who are on staff, there's so many things that we can do. We are limited in some ways, but we have this great resource of advocates and, and volunteers um, now who's like over 400 people. Imagine the impact of having all of those 400 plus people talking about this event. I mean, it just naturally, it makes sense to have everyone talking about it. And as you know, if you are, are on social media, the accounts you follow, once you start to see people that you're following talking about an event or an issue, you start to pay attention. So the more you people are hearing about it, the more people are paying attention. And it just gives Resolve, you know, credibility to know that, you know, people who are using their personal platforms to talk about um, this event, and it's not just us saying how great it is, because we, we're, we're kind of biased, we understand, like, how needed, uh, you know, how important this event is, but when others start to say that as well, and you have really genuine testimonials that you're sharing, then it kind of you know, th th that speaks for itself and it, it, let, uh, it gives other people security to know that they can participate in this event and it's not, it's, um, you know, managed well and that we ensure that all of our advocates are getting the support they need to be as ex successful as possible. That is a great answer. And I think also that you touched on earlier like I'm pretty sure that almost every U.S. senator has a Twitter account and that uh, elected officials are very active um, and that tweeting directly at your officials is a really accessible way to connect with them and share, you know, so, you know what you are passionate about and your advocacy. So that's also a great way to you know quite easily connect with somebody i think also just to add to that more now more than ever i think we're realizing how um impactful uh mm -hmm. twitter especially is right now with legislators that you know um it's they're even like celebrities I, I mean after the year that we've had we just realized that that is like the platform of choice for to get you know a message out there and to get someone's attention yeah yeah absolutely 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Simi, for joining and uh, going through the social media um, documents. And uh, we're going to end the uh, pre recorded webinar. But again, if anyone has any questions, you know, please feel free to reach out. I will have my contact information in the um, emails that this will be linked to, as well as on the website, and reach out to your state captains. Um, but we hope that you will engage in social media for the day. And thank you all for joining. Thank you.